شد او را ببونم به بودیشی دید پایان گای را را کنم دوستان حکم در اومی میخوا بود واقعی پاس آف جاست یا همچنگ سمان هم دارم هرکوز می دیگریز تو دو روی بودی دوستی در اومی پرمودی جونیتی اپنیرز ام پاسپاریتی آف نمیدیگر Honorable Sir of Odeme Ikenna, member representing the good people of Ekusigo constituency. Those in favor of the aye. Aye. Those against the Assumption of office 
have you some substantially contained soldier today? There are rich relative peaks and the future of violence and property across the state. In the coming year, the House will even intensify efforts in an oversight function to ensure that the Indiana Murray continues to have value for every public fund spent. Part of the legislative agenda of each assembly is the establishment of legislative projects and research office people that will assist members in critical analysis and understanding of certain economic programs, including the budget. In this respect, I am to request Mr. Governor to spare a little time after the project presentation to be converted around the premises to see the proposed site of the Google office and to better appreciate our other plans and challenges. Mr. ladies and gentlemen, as a prelude to this year's project presentation, Mr. Governor has ever sent in we don't tell the digital framework, which we will meticulously consider and approve. The MTEL gave the basic assumptions and direction for next year for next year project to be presented today. On behalf of my colleagues, I am sure that we that we will painstakingly be expeditiously looked at the incoming project with a V with a view to come up with a legal project framework that will satisfy the governmental expectations of our people. You see, ladies and gentlemen, let me and D. Johnson stay clearly that number belongs to all of us. We all have a duty to keep it safe and conducive for development. I therefore call on our people, irrespective of their political enemies, of political, of political affiliation to join hand with the governor in taking an embrace to the next step. It's on this call for unity and cooperation. It is on this call for unity and cooperation that I now have the pleasure to invite Mr. Governor of the Charles Ruto to present the 2024 State project. Mr. Governor, sir. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Madam Mayor Amra. Let me start. This is, I think, my second time with you uh, since the inauguration of this state assembly. And let me start once again by congratulating all of you, members of the eighth assembly and the leadership of the House for your election. Yours is a historic call to serve in the Anambra. As I always remind all of us, we have only one state, and our development focus is summarized by the mantra, one state, one people, one agenda. I want to thank you for your cooperation and collaboration so far. Together, together, we shall leave this state by a better darkness. On November 10, 2022, I was here to present the 2023 budget, captioned Budget of Acceleration. It was our first full year budget in office. Over the past 20 months, since our swearing in on March 17, 2022, we have intentionally focused on judiciously implementing the budget to address several of the foundational challenges and, and the results are beginning to show. Anambra is today ranked the number one among the 17 southern states on the ease of doing business. Number two, as the state with lowest infant mortality rate, best performing students in JAM and NEGO are from Anambra. Why budget it has recently also ranked Anambra? among the top five states of fiscal sustainability. During our second year anniversary of March 17, 2024, we shall present a comprehensive scorecard to our people. Everybody, <coughs> But suffice it to say that Anambra is a day 
on the match. Our security is getting stronger by the day, and the eight local governments that were in total control by the so-called unknown government have unlikely liberated. And I'm proud by every man is certainly one of the safest states in Nigeria today. Over 400 kilometers of road plus two flyovers and bridges are under construction in all the 21 local governments. And in a few weeks' time, we shall embark upon commissioning of the finished work. Anambra had a severe road crisis, and I promised during the electoral campaigns to declare a state of emergency on road. With a state of decay, even if we spent the entire year's budget on roads alone in one local government, it will still be extra. But we are very strategic in the choice of game, game changing roads that impact on the productivity of our people, especially in connecting either to neglected or abandoned people, local governments, and communities. We are breaking the 32 year old James, and that number will soon have proper befitting government house and governance larger government. Power is improving. We are winning the war on waste management, and the sales of drainage, traffic management, transit housing, law and order. The open drug market, Africa's biggest open drug market is under construction. And the pharmaceutical industrial park of Washington is under development. With about 15 manufacturers out of the expected 100 already signed up. Our regenerative agricultural revolution is on the move. And so far, we've distributed about 1,100,000 hybrid coconut and pancetic to over 100,000 households in our drive towards zero poverty, near agro industrialization, and a green and environmentally sustainable state. We will distribute at least 1 million seedlings per annum in the coming year as we target 500,000 households with each any millions of Naira per annum in a few years to come. For 25,000 diesel power uh, street lights have been converted into solar light, saving costs and powering the night economy. Our human capital remains an unrest greatest asset, and we are very intentional in building a resource that is productive at home and exportable abroad. Basic education is now truly free for all charges and levies in all public schools in Anambra. We are ending the phenomenon of schools without teachers by recruiting 5,000 teachers within the first nine months in office. That is ongoing recruitment of an additional 3,000 teachers. The target for our schools is smart education. Our schools, teachers, and students won several national and international prizes this year. We are also ending the era of hospitals without doctors and nurses by recruiting almost a thousand health workers, doctors, consultants, nurses, pharmacists, lab technicians, etc., to power our general hospitals and primary care centers. Four new general hospitals are under construction and several others. On that right Pregnant women now have free antenatal and delivery services in our number. Building the capacity and the empowerment of our youths to take care of their future remains our priority. Our pioneering One Youth Two Skills program has just graduated its first batch of 5,000 youths, and they have been empowered with 2 billion naira as seed capital to start their own businesses. We have also established the Solution Innovation District for a digital scale startups, research, commercialization, and creative talent. Over 20,000 youths have been trained on different digital scales. Earlier this morning, the SID organized the opening ceremony and the orientation for 2,500 youths selected out of the over 10,000 applicants for the training program on coding, fact, code, and Ambra to go through our unprecedented menu of youth empowerment programs each year. Our vision is to teach Anambra youths how to fish and turn them from job seekers to job creators. 
We're also resources the Alhambra Small uh, Business Agency, ASPA, to be able to provide required chip credit to these foreign entrepreneurs. Mr. So Speaker, Honorable Members, I want to put on record that I recruiting directly slightly over 10,000 workers within the first 20 months. Having 5,000 of our youths empowered to take charge of their destiny, the training, the digital skill training ongoing, the various other empowerment programs that were done while, while backing up. I think I'm confident of all to say that we are empowering our youth and empowering our people in a way that has not been done before, not within this record time of 21 in August. With our mantra of technology everywhere and everything in technology, our local government system is being reformed to strengthen its service delivery at the grassroots, while our tax administration is systematically going digital. Our land registry is going digital, and transfer of land titles can now be completed within a week rather than over six months previously. The environment remains our number's number one existential threat. Flooding is a menace, and Anambra remains the dolly erosion capital of the world. We have launched the Clean, Green, and Sustainable Anambra project, and it will receive greater impetus in the coming year. The list is long, honorable members. But, Mr. Speaker, members of this house, it is important to remind us that the government has implemented far-reaching comprehensive set of palliatives to ameliorate the economic hardship of the citizens as a consequence of the inevitable removal of petroleum subsidy. As you are aware, the federal government gave each state a loan of $2 billion with a grant element of 52% to assist in funding palliatives. But ours here in Anambra is a government on the foundation of the All Progressive Grand Alliance Act. We are progressive, and the welfare of the ordinary Nigerians, especially the poor and vulnerable, remain our primary focus. Our motto is, be your brothers and sisters given. For us, there is no better time to rise up to the full essence of our motto and ideological stance on behalf of the ordinary people than now. Consequently, even before the removal of subsidy, we had earlier increased the salary of public servants by 10%, effective from January 2023. And this translates to over 2 billion in 2023, excluding local government and teachers. We also granted all public servants and pensioners about 59,000 persons a non-taxable cash award of 12,000 naira per month spanning September to December 2023. This amounts to about 2.83 billion. Beginning from today, this morning, as I speak here, about 200,000 bags of 10 kg bags of rice will be distributed to vulnerable persons across the 326 wards in Anambra. And this costs slightly over 2 billion as well. The 200,000 10 kg bags they distributed like that, exclusive of about 18,000 or so 15 kg bags and some others that will also be added on today and distributed to our people who must ameliorate the suffering of the ordinary person. We have, of course, of an assumption of office, we met four year gratuity area for state and local government retirees. We are systematically clearing the areas while everyone who has retired since our assumption of office has been assured of prompt payment of gratuity. Pensions and salaries are paid as that when you. We have, a, a, uh, we have also exempted the highly vulnerable persons from all forms of taxation and labor, including the hawkers in the streets, wheelbarrow and drum pushers, organizers, 
and lizards, gather riders, and many traders with whose capital are going to be less than a hundred thousand naira. All these people are exempt from any levies or taxes in Anabra. And anyone who is still collecting or harassing these people is actually, um, I have you for it, it's not just fighting uh, the government and uh, its policy, but it's fighting nature. Because these people, these poor people, need not just to pray, they need to rise up and run. By all transformers, KK, minibus, etc. Our free education policy and free medical services program were also announced during this period. As committed progressives, we are determined to let the poor not only break, as I said a moment ago, not just to break. Honorable members, after 20 months of systematic programs to take back our state from non state actors and addressing key aspects of foundational challenges, it is now time to change here. I am here, therefore, to present the draft 2024 budget. With this budget, we are making an announcement that Anambra is changing here and that the promised transformation agenda will now begin. The transformation agenda is one that intentionally executes a new master plan of the state designed to turn Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart legacy. We are determined to change Anambra's narrative from its current status as a departure land to a destination of choice. The preferred destination to live, work, invest, learn, and relax and enjoy. Evidently, Nigeria's macroeconomic environment remains challenging due largely to the missteps of the past. Some national governments are obviously constrained by the larger macroeconomic environment. I think a moment ago, the Honorable Speaker did make reference to the MDEF medium term expenditure for work uh, that was presented here. Of course, much of the framework, uh, if you like, the basic underlying uh, statistics for that, we got to also derive from the federal uh, statistics to think in terms of, you know, projections for revenue, uh, oil, and all of that. Because we got to uh, derive from those where some national the limited, the limited headroom available to create value on their number. Consequently, and in spite of the humongous need, we are presenting today a modest budget of 410 billion, 132 million, 225,272 for the fiscal year 20. 24, compared to 258,984,874,000 for the year 2023, a 57.8% increase. Recurrent expenditure amounts to about 96.2 billion. That's accounting for about 23.46%. Why capital expenditure is 313.9 billion? or 76.54 billion. Budget deficit is estimated at 120 billion. And relative to 2023, some key sectors have significant increases. For example, the administrative sector is an increase of about 50.85%, the economic sector about 103.43%, judiciary about 72.9%, social sector about 60.24%, education, Working 140 percent, 140.88% increase. Health, 169.55% increase. Infrastructure investment, about 119.84% increase. Overhead cost, that is what, etc. Legislature, obviously, is also a key priority. Especially as we signposted this draft budget, the establishment of the Legislative Service Commission. 
while consolidating and expanding the ongoing programs and projects. Honorable members, the emphasis on the sectors as indicated above signal new vistas. Three new cities are part of the new master plan for Anambra. Oka 2.0, Onesha 2.0, and a new industrial city with export emporium and potential for a possible future effort. An industrial master plan is being finalized while the railway master plan and feasibility study is also being completed. The $200 million recent, I mean, um, uh, uh, project development advisory and financing agreement recently signed uh, with the Africa Bank is part of this new agenda. We will continue to address uh, the ease of doing business. With the completion of the fourth city, the myriad of infrastructural development, as well as the coming of a branded international hotel in Orca, both Orca 1.0 and Orca 2.2 will manage to give an umbra a truly befitting capital city. Urban regeneration will be aggressively pursued. The environment remains, as I said before, our number one existential threat. And under the 2024 budget, we will intentionally accelerate our agenda on clean, green, plant, and sustainable land number. Smart green cities is our goal. Our infrastructural development will deliberately target the provision of transportation system that will serve the next generations by targeting the dualization of key highways and modernizing our mass transport system. A new electricity market will be created and our security operations will be upgraded with high technology applications, even with barely 4% of the budget devoted for security. The 2024 budget signals a significant investment in urban and semi urban water schemes, and we expect in their number to see taps running again in 2024. Yes. In the 2024, our siblings of coconut palm, uh, coconut palm, okwa, okwa, soa, soa, etc., per household in the 2024. We are mainstreaming the sports economy and the state football team will debut in 2024. Several creative sectors, other than that, will also be promoted. Yes, we will deepen our structural reforms regarding the delivery mechanism that emphasizes public-private community partnerships, especially in service delivery to the grassroots, including our new zero cost program. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I don't want to bore you with all the deliverables in the budget. The full document is already before you. Suffice it to note that the size of the budget is indeed very small in real terms that is the purchasing power of the Naira today or even in US dollars when compared to some years ago for this state. When you put it in context, uh, with your speech made a lot, even uh, compared to a few months ago, now it's in by thousands of percent. Uh, so to speak. Uh, prices of critical inputs, especially for infrastructure delivery, simply to gallop. But in spite of this, we are determined to maximize value from the number as we are currently doing. Recall that the Seventh Assembly approved in 2022 for us to borrow 100 billion naira for infrastructure. We didn't do so in 2022. For the ongoing 2023 budget, it was assumed that we will borrow 90 billion to fund the budget. Up until now, we still have not borrowed a cover from that. And we won't borrow until the end of the year. We won't borrow through to the year. So for the 20 months, in spite of the approval by this house for us to borrow, we still literally have refused to do so. In the proposed 2024 budget, 
There is a deficit of 120 billion expected to be funded through a facility from financial institutional institutions. Well, be rest assured, honorable members, that we would borrow unless it satisfies two stringent conditions, criteria we have set. A, any borrowing we undertake must be a concessional loan. And B, it must be deployed to projects that we can show how they will pay back the loan in the future. We are prioritizing project finance if we ever have to borrow and not to borrow from ourselves. Even with an estimated 66% budget performance for 2023, we insist on not borrowing unless it satisfies our set criteria. Our internally generated revenue IGR remains a fundamental challenge, honorable members. In the 2023 budget, we expected a monthly revenue of about 4 billion. So far, we are averaging 2 billion and we are still projecting 4.2, about 4.2 billion per month in 2024. This is a welcome call to all residents of Anambra and all of the Anambra, wherever they may be. We can build the envisioned, livable, and prosperous homeland with our saliva. With the abundant resources that God has blessed in the Anambra, there is literally nothing that we collectively set our minds to that we cannot achieve for our homeland. We have a plan and the organization to execute, but we need resources. If each of us pays just five to ten percent of our annual income as tax to the state, I can assure you the annual state of our dream will be fast tracked in the shortest possible time. Many people keep asking how we manage to fund the huge infrastructure projects and other programs and projects without borrowing over the past 20 months, given the state of treasury when we assumed office. The answer is simple. Our mantra is doing more with less. It has involved extreme austerity and cutting costs of governance to bear more. <coughs> As can be seen from the proposed 2020, 2024 budget, recurring expenditure is only 23%. Why capital expenditure is 77 percent. This makes a bold step. Yes, we have been in office for 20 months, but we have not taken any salary, and we have not bought any vehicle for the first lady of Anambra. Before we assumed office, it cost about 137 million naira to clean public offices per month, but it currently costs 11 million <coughs> per month. To do the same job with a monthly savings of 126 million naira. This is how we do it here. I want to especially appreciate members of the solution team, the honorable members, members of the judiciary, and all stakeholders for their sacrifice in the service of our homeland. You are the generation of public servants likely paid to serve. We will never take your sacrifices for granted. We appreciate all the stakeholders in the Anambra project, our community leaders, traditional rulers, church leaders, the private sector, the international community, the public servants, the federal government, the media, the NGO, the youth, women, students, etc., for their support. Your continued partnership and support will be critical in the delivery of the 2024 budget outcome. I want to assure the Anambra that every cover you across in our hands will be judiciously deployed to maximize value for you. You are employed to project that could be Bezim and I to serve you. And together with the solution team, we will continue to work 24 by 7 to do just that. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, Munam the Anambra. Let me end by reiterating that this budget is your budget. The agenda is your, about your future and the future of your own generation. For me, we are not just working for the, next, for the present and next generation. 
we are planning for many generations of God. The 2024 budget speaks to that. Say, I will, and great powers will come to your aid. Today and in 2024, let us all agree that it will be done. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, the journey has only just begun. The God bless Anna Prasti, the God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise in the motion for first reading of the 2024 draft is to make that bill 2023. The Anambra State Appropriation Law 2024, a bill for a law to provide for the sum of 410 million, 132 million, 225,272 naira for the services of the government of Anambra State of Nigeria for the year ending 31st December 2024 and for the later purposes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Two hundred and seventy-two naira for the services of the government of Anambra State of Nigeria for the year ending 31st December 2024 and for later purposes. First reading, Mr. Speaker. 410 million, 132 million, 225,000. 272 Naira for services of government of Anambra State of Nigeria for the year ending 34 December 2024 and other related proposals. First reading to give the vote of terms actually with a roadmap of the programs I speak with the mandates of the people of Anojatu constituency. Mr. Speaker, the assignment given to me is simple and direct to give a vote of thanks to Mr. Governor. Why Mr. Governor was presenting the draft this place? In fact, as soon as I got the information that Mr. Governor will be appearing before us today to deliver this uh, draft instrument, I was wondering the name or the acronym that will come with this instrument, since that of last year was Project of Acceleration. I was wondering within me whether it will be more acceleration or whatever. So as soon as I got a copy of the bill, that was where my eyes went first. Now I'm changing gears. Maybe the acceleration we had last year was at gear one and gear two. So we are not we are not on speed gear yet. But this year, this the next physical year, we are speeding up from what Mr. Governor said. And Mr. Speaker, if we scan through this uh, draft estimate you will see the intention of Mr. Gogol. It is clear for all. Because when he was bringing out his uh, speech, he was telling us the percentage of increase, especially in the capital estimates. Mr. Speaker, it may interest you to know that a quick scan of this document will show you the areas of special interest by Mr. Governor, one of which improvement to health, a sharp increase from 6 billion to about 16 billion. Mr. Speaker, 
if you look at enhancing skills and knowledge, another sharp increase from 7 billion to about 18 billion. Mr. Speaker, let's look at water resources. From less than 1 billion, from less than 1 billion, I mean, the, okay, from less than 2 billion to almost 10 billion. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, just looking at this will tell us where we are driving. As it is education, health, scale acquisition, urban regeneration, these are the areas which the government is spending this fiscal year. And it is for us to assist in our own ways, to help the ways we can, to make sure that these notable ideas of Mr. Governor are achieved. But Mr. Governor, like I said, scanning through again, you know, I am always gender sensitive. I looked at the draft estimates for the women and the vulnerable work, I noticed a marginal decrease. Marginal decrease. Uh, from 2.5 billion to 2.4. It's a double look. What will I tell my mother when I get home? <laughs> uh, but this place, they wrote huge development. Another marginal decrease from 5.6 to 5.5. Uh, Mr. Mr. Governor, I'm looking at your document. <laughs> okay, let's not do that because we they have uh, days to sit with the relevant MPAs to panel beat these documents without having any intention of altering it or altering the intention of Mr. Governor. But we will look into it, cross pollinate ideas, and uh, arrive at something. We already have something that is very good for our people, something that is super for our people. Mr. Governor, for you to increase this budget from 198 to over 400 people is something. Yes, you said that uh, the purchasing power of our money has that kind of use. It is true. But we look at the revenue. When the purchasing power is reducing, the revenue is stagnant or stagnant. Uh, so, I don't know the magic, but like you said, we keep looking at it because we've been performing magic before now. We've been performing magic. So, Mr. Governor, you made mention of the IGR to not meeting the expectations of this government. Uh, it may interest you to know that with the partnership you have with this Honorable House of Assembly, uh, Mr. our speaker, Graciously appointed a special committee headed by my friend here, apart from the standing committee of the House, to look into ways to improve the IGR of this state. And Mr. Governor, I can assure you that at the end of the sitting or the meeting, and when the report of this annual committee is rendered before the Honorable House, solutions. Solution to our problem will be there. Finally, Mr. Governor, today you presented this draft estimate about 11 days later than when you did it last year. You see, we are already running out of time because this draft estimate is supposed to pass through first, second reading, defense, and the bilateral interaction and get passed before the year runs out. So to that effect, Mr. Governor, we want to hit the ground running immediately. And uh, we have agreed, you said, that we are paying to serve. This time around, we will just pay to serve. We will also sacrifice our time to serve our people. And Mr. Governor, we have agreed at the committee level that the bilateral discussion and the budget defense will commence in earnest from Friday this week. 
and uh, we ask you, we beg you to direct the commissioners, councils, heads of parastatals and other department and agencies to make sure that they attend this all important discussion with the committee of finance and their corporation and the other relevant committees of the house. And uh, they should also make sure that they stick to the timetable. Mr. Governor, I believe that this budget should be given priority attention. So whatever, we wouldn't entertain any excuse from any person. Before the end of today, they will get the timetable and we pray and ask that you direct them to please stick to the timetable, the day and the times allotted to each and the so that we'll be able to finish this and uh, give you the instrument you need to serve the people of Ireland. Once again, thank you for coming and thank you for coming with your team. We promise to do the work we can. Mr. Speaker, I think that the assignments given to me have been initially in short Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move a motion for adjournment for this house to be convened tomorrow, Wednesday, 22nd of November, 2023. <laughs>